Hello, my beautiful friend. Welcome back to the podcast. Today, I want to talk about how to transform your health in 10 weeks. And the reason I want to talk about this now is because this is the time of year where a lot of us put aside our health and wellness goals. This is the time of year that we're entering where a lot of people gain weight. This is the time of year when discipline goes out the window. This is the time of year that when we get to January, then we think about getting in shape, losing weight because of all the overindulgences that we have done in basically November and December, right? Those two months of the year. Studies show that that is when people gain the most weight that time of the year. And it's about five to 10 pounds that people can gain during that time. And so I don't want to come at it from, oh, the damage is done. Now let me course correct. I actually want to help you be preventative during this time that's so slippery slopey for a lot of women. And I really want to come back to the pillars that are going to help you lose weight, lose body fat, feel better, and really live at your optimal best. And that's the whole reason I created Transform in 10. It used to be called Tone in 10, but people thought it was a boot camp program. It is not. It is a health, longevity, and wellness program for women, particularly 50 and older. It's because our bodies change. And there is a whole movement right now about perimenopause, menopause, how much we have not studied this phase of a woman's life, how we weren't trained in pharmacy schools, in medical schools. And this is an important time of life for women, this transition, because there are so many hormonal changes going on. We lose a lot of bone density as we go from perimenopause into menopause. And I'm taking measures to protect my bone. I've measured my bone and it is not good. I really need to level up to maintain bone and hopefully be able to build bone. And I don't think we were given this information. We think we kind of come to health when something goes wrong. And I want to empower women to take care of their health, to optimize it and have it for as long as they can. And that's why I created Transform in 10. So I want to talk about some of the principles from that program so that you can start thinking about it and implementing it into your life. I didn't call it information in 10. I called it transformation in 10. Why? Because I want you to hear this information, but it's when you put it into practice, when you start changing those habits, your lifestyle habits, when you start implementing this lifestyle medicine into your life, that's when you experience the transformation. And that's what I want to help women get because I don't want us to feel cranky and tired and depressed and go to the doctor only to be given symptomatology band-aids. Here is your antidepressant. That's not getting to the root cause of your depression. Maybe it's how you're eating. Maybe it's how you are thinking. Maybe it's your stress level. And I'm not against medication. Actually, I'm for them, but only when they're getting to the root cause or using them temporarily until we can fix what is actually going on. Because what I don't want is to create more dependency on medications that aren't really getting to the root cause. So even though that symptom goes away, these other four symptoms you're still experiencing. And then you need four other medications for those symptoms. Let's get to the root cause. This is the whole premise of how and why I created Drink Less Lifestyle, which is now Epic You. It's because everybody was focused on the drink, and that's not the real cause of the problem. And so if you look at alcohol and you try to contain that, that's not the real beast. <laughs> We've got to get to the root cause, which is the brain and the thinking and the desire that's created inside. It's an inside out solution. And so transform in 10 is that inside out solution. Now, there's a lot of things that we need to manage on the outside for sure. And you're going to hear that in this podcast, but it's really to get at what is going on in our 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, because our bodies are changing. And gosh darn it, I want you to know how and why so that you can take care of it. For me, if you just tell me, do this, do this, do this, and I don't know exactly how and why I'm doing it, I'm not bought in. I'm not really that convinced that it's that important. But when I hear about, 
okay, this is actually what's happening in your physiology. Your hormones are going wonky. This is why you're feeling sad. This is why you have more anxiety. This is why you feel so restless. It really helps to understand the root cause and work on that because that's going to give you more benefit and longer lasting benefit. And it really comes down to lifestyle medicine. And that is the whole focus of Transform in 10 is lifestyle medicine. What you do on the daily and the weekly and the monthly that's going to impact your health the most. So I started talking about this in some of my friend circles. And I will tell you, it has led me to places I had no idea I was going. <laughs> when your passion starts to fuel your words. So I was at a networking group. And wound up talking to some women there and talking about, yes, hormonal health. And they think, oh, hormones, you're talking about estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. I said, yes, I know that area, but I'm also talking about blood sugar and insulin and cortisol and thyroid. And if you don't control these major three, forget about the sex hormones because they're not going to work as optimally. So you can go on testosterone and estrogen and progesterone, yes. But if those big three aren't working, you're not going to get the maximal benefit from those drugs. And then they're like, wow, I never knew this. Nobody's ever taught me this. So then I was invited to do a whole discussion with them outside of this conference and talking about how do we optimize that? Because nobody's taught them. So I had a whole discussion from that. And then we started talking about, okay, now what about these sex hormones? When do I go on them? Am I too old for them? What is the best formulation? Bioidentical versus synthetic. And you all know here that I am not a fan of synthetic. There are too many risks with synthetic. Unfortunately, so many women are still put on synthetic hormones. And I solely believe in bioidentical, the type that mimic what your body makes is the safest. And if you look at the data, it will show you much less risk, much less risk. And so we got in a discussion of this and then some of the women felt very comfortable. Some of the women were drinking. <laughs> of course, that lets down the barriers. And all of a sudden we started talking about their sex life and how that's been impacted and how things are changing down there. And so then I got invited from there to do another living room discussion at a friend's house because she wants to learn how to prevent decay of the vajayjay. -jay. <laughs> so we started talking about that because urinary tract infections can start happening. Breakdown of the vaginal wall starts happening. Dryness, feeling like the Sahara Desert, as the women were saying. And I really want women to know that there are options where we can prevent that and treat that. So if you're there... There's treatment options. If you want to prevent it, fabulous. There's medication. There are options for that as well. And so I've been doing a lot of these in-home talks. Then someone invited me to a hormone happy hour. So then I've been doing talks there. And I'm really understanding how much women do not understand what happens as they turn from 40, perimenopause, which lasts about 10 years, by the way, and you get all kinds of wonky symptoms. If your period starts going wonky, that's a clear sign you are probably in perimenopause. Your body is already doing changes that you want to start doing lifting weights. You want to start building bone because you're quickly losing bone in the perimenopause phase. Then you get to menopause and there's other symptoms that come. The hot flashes. That's when vaginal dryness really kicks in if that is affected to you. Not everybody gets hot flashes. Only 75% of the women going into menopause actually get hot flashes. Some people say, my menopause transition was easy. Nothing happened. I didn't get night sweats. I didn't get hot flashes. Great. You're one of the 25% that didn't. But did you get other symptoms? Some people talk about vertigo. Some people talk about depression, anxiety, feeling restless, feeling useless, feeling purposeless, feeling like my meaning is gone. At a time when we're in that sandwich generation, when we're taking care of our older parents and we've got kids at home, some of them are teenagers, some of them are coming into their hormones, they feel crazy, you feel crazy, and women are just really turning to alcohol or other things to soothe rather than getting at the root cause and treating that. And I am on fire to help women understand their health. In fact, I even put it on my website. Because I want you to know you can feel amazing whether you're 50, 60, 70, 80 and above. 
And what you do on the daily and the weekly matters the most. Yes, your doctor can help you when you need that. But it's the lifestyle choices that you make along the way. Here's a quick example. Many of you who've been following me with alcohol, I got off most alcohol and I can't tell you how much better my life is. I can't tell you how much less anxiety I experience, how much less stress and depression. Because I'm no longer avoiding reality, I'm embracing reality and saying, oh gosh, that didn't work. Let me figure out a way to solve that. For instance, like little things, like the way I was parenting and the way I was hovering or trying to control my daughter when she doesn't want to be controlled (laughs) and left to her own and helping her coach her on her life has been such a better way than trying to control her in her life. She's actually turning out to be an amazing human, which I'm seeing examples of all the time. I needed to get out of the way so she could become her best. I did not see that when I was constantly drinking. And now that I cut back even more, I have more energy to put to the things that really matter to me, to put to these projects of helping other women understand how best to treat themselves, care for themselves, love on themselves. That is health, my friends. That is health. When you treat yourself, care for yourself, love on yourself, guess what? You want to eat well. You want to exercise. You want to contribute to your family and your community. You're no longer isolating. You're no longer depressed. You are out there in the world doing great things, good or great things. Doesn't matter. I don't care. Just do good, right? Good things. That is so needed. I know a lot of women tell me they feel washed up. They feel old. They feel judged for feeling old. They don't have as much energy. They're tired. They get quickly exhausted. They need more naps. And I just want to suggest that some of that might be due to your physiology. And when we optimize your physiology with lifestyle habits, I bet you a lot of that will go away, even without medication. And I'm all for using medication if you need it. But the medication is somewhat effective or has like one or two mechanisms of action when there are other things you can do that may in your life that will even make that medication work better or that you won't need it at all. And so I really want to talk about some of these principles that we talk about in Transform in 10 so that you can elevate and optimize your health. So we do talk about a lot of things that plague women in this phase of life is that they gain belly fat. Whether it's a vanity metric, hey, I'm all about vanity. I want to look good. I want to feel good for as long as I can. And I am willing to work for it. I am willing to do the things that work for my body to help optimize my body. Even if it's not a vanity metric, even if you're like, well, I don't care about that vanity metric. It is important because we know that visceral fat, aka belly fat, is the type that's most dangerous And a setup for chronic conditions like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, yada, yada, yada. All the things that are plaguing our American system right now. When we look at adults in the United States, 88 to 93% of us are not metabolically flexible. We're not able to burn fat. That's what that means. We're not able to burn fat. So if we don't burn it, what do we do? We just accumulate it. And then we get mad when we can't fit in those jeans or we get upset when we look at ourselves in the mirror or we're like, I stay, we say, I'm trying all the things and nothing is working. And this is why I want to do this podcast, because guess what? We have been taught, at least myself and what I'm hearing out there when I'm in the living room of other women. And when people get on the phone with me and say, I need a strategy session with you, my health is not where I want it to be. And they just get a one-on-one call with me and they sign up for those. And I'm helping women understand their bodies and their health. Here's what I hear all the time. I'm doing all the things. I'm dieting and I'm exercising. I'm dieting and I'm exercising. And I've said it in this podcast before. It takes more than diet and exercise, ladies, when you're above 40. We've been sold that bill of goods. We've been on that campaign, move more, eat less, failed. It's not the only two pillars that are needed for optimal health care and for weight loss. Is movement important? Yes. Is diet important? Yes, 
Absolutely. Are there other pillars? Yes. Because just diet and exercise alone does not balance your hormones. And when you're going through this wonky phase as a woman, when you're in perimenopause and into menopause, it's going to require more than those two pillars. And that's why I talk about all 10 pillars inside of Transform in 10 so that you know what pillars they are and what to do. Because if you just focus on diet and exercise and you're not getting the results, hey, if you're getting the results from that, sing on, sister. I'm all for you. Great. Maybe your body is more tuned up than others. Maybe the way you are put together, that is giving you excellent results. Fantastic. Keep doing it. I'm all about doing what works. But what I'm finding for a lot of women, particularly north of 50, is it stops working. So I want to give you some of the pillars that we talk about in Transform in 10 because I want you to really move the needle on your health and not keep beating yourself up that I'm doing the diet or I'm doing the exercise and it isn't working or I do it for a period of time and I fall back. I do it for a period of time and I fall back. And I will tell you part of that is perfectionism. I do my program, how I operate my lifestyle habits. It could be an 80-20 rule that I follow or a 90-10. There are some months where I doubled down and I said, it's 90% of the time, I'm going to make the right choices and do the right thing. And 10% of the time, I'm going to allow for fun, a little bit of overindulgence and go a little off plan because following something 100% is too rigid for me and I get super hard on myself. There are other months, such as when I'm on vacation, it might be 80-20. It's like, okay, this is my time to relax. It's my time to enjoy. I'm going to be less rigid, but I'm not going to throw it all out. It's not going to be a full-on feast, craziness, drunken nights. You know, I'm over that. That actually does not bring me joy anymore. It just brings me headaches, hangovers, feeling terrible about myself. And I actually don't really even enjoy it fully in the moment. A splurge now and then? Absolutely. So 80-20 for those months where it's vacation or maybe December with the holidays, but most of the time I follow 90-10 because I find that's easier for me, that's easier for my brain, and it gets me the results that I want. So I love helping women understand how to implement that for them. You might hear that and say, oh, that's great, but then how do you implement that? And walking you through exactly how to do that for you. I don't want you to follow my lifestyle. I want you to embrace these tools so that you can follow it in your lifestyle. Because the best way to get results is to actually follow through on what you say you're going to do. And everybody's lifestyle is different. Preferences are different. And so I want to customize it so that it fits for your lifestyle so that you can keep these as habits, not one-time behaviors. Habits, something that you are able to do week in, week out, week in, week out. Because that is what's going to give you results, these lifestyle habits. So when you are thinking about your health, I want to give you some pillars that we talk about inside Transform in 10. One is the food. Absolutely. One is fitness. Absolutely. Or movement. So when it comes to food, right, we know balanced blood sugar is going to give you the most benefit of your body. Now, how does that look like for me versus you versus another woman? Might be three different ways, but I will tell you some principles that really work for women. And that is intermittent fasting. Time-restricted eating, you could call it that, but intermittent fasting is what I call it. And when you can apply intermittent fasting above 40 to your life, now you have to fast differently if you're still cycling versus if you're not cycling. And I talk about that in Transform in 10. I used to have a whole program, intermittent fasting for women, I've pulled that program into Transform in 10 because I realized, oh, I'm helping you with your food and intermittent fasting, but let me help you with the rest of your life and like how to incorporate exercise and all the other pillars so that you get optimal health. So I pulled all that information in inside Transform in 10. Do it in a way that serves your lifestyle. For some women, they don't want to be a 16-8 seven days a week. It doesn't feel good to them. They feel like they're going to rebel. It feels too constrictive. Great. We don't have to follow it seven days a week. But what can you do? What are you willing to do? And then you try it. And then you implement. And then you see the results that you get. And when we study metrics inside of Transform in 10, 
I never use the scale. I use other metrics. Other metrics that your body is giving us that tell us if it's working or not. I think so many of us are damaged by the scale. We get so disappointed stepping on the scale when things aren't moving quickly or we just look at that number and we make it mean something about us. We're not good enough. We're not pretty enough. We're not thin enough. We're not whatever. So I feel the scale can be very damaging for some people. If you want to use the scale and that feels uplifting for you, great. Then I embrace it. But otherwise, let's look at other metrics. Let's look at other signs that your body is giving you, whether this feels good or doesn't. And I don't think many of us are taught how to do that and what metrics to look at. Actually, I want to tell you a quick story. So I had an epic strategy session with a woman. She was in her 60s and she's like, I just don't understand my labs. My doctor said I need to do this, this, and this. My cholesterol's high. And he says I need to walk and this and this and this. And I said, okay. So she sends me her lab work. We're going through it. And I said, wow, did you get told about this lab marker? Because this one's the most troubling and the one that needs to be corrected for the quickest. Because this is going to set you up for inflammatory conditions as well as joint disease and all the like. She had no idea. That parameter wasn't even discussed with her. And then she had no idea how to correct it, even if she was looking at her own labs and like, what do I do with that? And so we implemented or gave her a strategy for things that she can be doing to optimize her health, prevent future disease, and feel better in the moment. Now, all of that was missed. And this is just the way it is of the system. It's a taxed medical system. We don't have appointments generally are 10, 15 minutes long. And maybe it's not customized to a woman's body, the information that we're getting. We're just getting blanketed statements thrown at us, like walk more. <laughs> it's like, okay, how about some other specifics that are really going to help me rather than just walk more? Walking is so important. Please don't hear that I'm just bashing on walking. Not at all. Embrace walking so much. So important for your health. But this person was actually walking over 10,000 steps a day. She was doing really good at getting walking in. So yes, we can have her walk more, but I don't know if it would really affect the lab value. And she wasn't even known that that lab value was so off. And walking actually wasn't the best thing to address that lab value. And so by helping educate her and then give her tools and strategies to implement and then go back to her doctor and say, hey, this is a drug that can help if you want to ask for that, if you want to get put on that, here are the pros and cons, and really empowering her to understand and take charge of her health. And that's really what my mission is, is to help women understand and take charge of their health. Find your advocates. Find the people that are going to help you get to where you want to go. All right, so we talked about food. Food, critical right? You want a balanced blood sugar. You can wear CGM. You can monitor how you feel. And I have a whole booklet when you get to the food part of the program inside Transform in 10. If you're watching on YouTube, I will show you. I've created these booklets inside the program. So where you learn about what it is needed for a woman and you also get a scorecard at the end of metrics that you can measure that does not include the scale that's going to tell you, okay, this is how I know I'm optimizing my health because I really want to give you the tools so that you can do this on your own and learn what works best for you. So food, critical, and protein, obviously, if you haven't been listening to Gabrielle Lyon and Drew Pro at podcasts, like these podcasts I adore because they teach me so much about health without having to spend hours and hours and hours on the internet researching the studies. They summarize it so well, but getting enough protein in because we need protein. We need protein to build muscle. We need protein to build neurotransmitters. We need protein to build serotonin. We need protein to build hormones. Without enough protein, guess what? Our health is wonky. We don't get enough hormones produced. We don't get enough bone produced. We don't get enough muscle produced. And we know that that all starts to decline above 40. And so protein becomes more important when you're above 40. Not less, but more. Not only that, our GI system, if we're not taking care of our microbiome, it's harder and harder and harder to absorb that protein, especially as you get in your 60s and 70s. It gets really hard to absorb protein. And so for those clients of mine that are a bit older, I talk about, okay, what protein sources and how much are you getting in? Because we want to make sure that you're absorbing it. 
And so there are different modalities that you can use, different forms of protein that you can use that are more easily digestible. So therefore they are absorbable. Protein is key. Without protein, you don't build muscle. The protein stimulus hypothesis requires that you resistance train and you have enough protein on board. If those two criteria aren't met, you're not going to get muscle being built. And we know as we age, muscle is wasted. About 10% per decade gets wasted. So that's sarcopenia. Love the work Dr. Gabrielle Lyon has put together on this. Read her book. Listen to her podcast if you are wanting to learn more about that. I summarize. I read her book. I listened to her podcast most of the time and summarized a lot of what she said into my program because it is critical that women know this. When it comes to movement, so resistance training is going to be the one that's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck. It's not the only one you should be doing, particularly as you age. We need to keep in agility and movement and not become fragile. But fragility comes back to resistance training. So lift heavy stuff for sure. Not to the point where you injure yourself, but we want to be lifting heavy stuff. So those three pound and five pound weights that we see on all these like ads and at these senior centers, I think puts in our mind that, oh, if we just move three and five pound weights, we're good. No, that's going to be to age gracefully. We want to age powerfully. And that means we need to lift heavy stuff. Okay, women. So if you're on three and five pounds, great place to start. But make sure that your goal is to get beyond those pounds. You want to be lifting heavier stuff. That's going to help you push off the toilet seat. That's going to help you do those activities of daily living that prevent you from going into a senior living center or a nursing home. Okay, so when it comes to those two pillars, I think a lot has already been discussed there. There are other pillars if you want to slim your waistline and you want to maintain your current size, fit into jeans, not feel bloated, not getting the muffin top, not getting the menopot, right? All of this central adiposity that comes on during this transition. A lot of times when I'm doing these in-home little conversations that I'm having with women, a lot of them start saying, yeah, I gained about five or 10 pounds during menopause and I don't like it and I don't know what to do about it. And I will tell you a lot of that weight comes from high cortisol levels. So if you are exercising too much, you're actually increasing more of your cortisol. So we want to get that cortisol level down. I do measure it on some of my clients that want to get it measured. I'm also working with a doctor's group where I'm being onboarded for women who want semi-glutide and tizepatide, these weight loss medications just for short term, but making sure they're doing those lifestyle habits as well. So they're not on these medications for very long. These medications are great. My mom has taken them, really improved her health. I'm all for them, for the women that need them and for the patients that need them. But long term, we know that that's not the most optimal strategy because they also promote muscle loss. So some of that fat comes off, but also you get muscle loss. And that is very concerning for people that are older because it's hard to build muscle. And so I'm helping women with their longevity health, energy shots, all of that. So women are making appointments with me for that telemedicine health if they are interested in these modalities in addition to the lifestyle habits that are taught inside Transform in 10. So back to cortisol. Cortisol is elevated as you become more into perimenopause and menopause, and cortisol actually will adhere to belly fat. So we have more cortisol receptors in our belly fat versus our back fat versus our leg fat versus wherever other fat. And this is why belly fat becomes such an issue when looking at chronic disease. This is why it's one of the criteria for metabolic health. We want a waist circumference that is under 35 inches for women. And so that is a specific metric that is very important looking at your metabolic health. And we want to optimize that. Because when you optimize that, you start optimizing your neurotransmitters, your feel-good hormones, you start feeling better and looking better. All of that really impacts how a woman feels. And so I really want to help you understand that and how to optimize cortisol levels. And that means stress management. That is one week inside the program that we just look at how are you reducing your stress and how do you know it's effective? Because we could be doing things and we're like, I don't know if it's effective, right? So I give you metrics, again, to measure. Because if we don't measure, we don't know. And so it's frustrating if you're saying, I'm doing all the things. But the bigger question is, are they working? 
we just want to make sure you're not doing all the things. We just want to make sure you're doing some of the things and make sure they're working because it's very frustrating to think I have to do this and this and this and this and this and nothing is working, right? So we need to measure what is working. And so we focus on that as well. Another area is the microbiome. This is an area that we've just learned about in the last 20 years. So much is exploding inside the microbiome space and how your microbiome, the good bacteria versus the bad bacteria, are you feeding the bad bacteria? Alcohol feeds the bad bacteria, and it's going to make you crave more sugar and more alcohol. And so we don't want candida, and we don't want some of these bad bugs to be overgrowth inside of the microbiome. And so what can you do to feed the good bugs? What can you do to minimize those bad bugs? Lots of great data inside the microbiome, workbook that you get, plus there's a video that you get, and then metrics that you can measure and how are you feeding your microbiome? Okay, another thing we talk about, of course, of course, of course, in the program is mindset. If you have toxic thoughts, guess what? It produces toxic physiology. Your biology changes. One of the best books I've ever read on this topic is The Power of Belief by Bruce Lipton. If you are a reader and you want to learn about the science, about how our thoughts change our cells, and he also talks about why trauma gets stored in the body because it does. It gets stored inside of our cells. And this is why letting go of the past becomes very hard for people because they think they're letting go with their mind, but it's still stored in their cells. So looking at mindset and having that toxic mindset, those toxic beliefs, I'm not good enough, I'll never get to the goal weight, whatever the way we talk to ourselves as women can be so destructive and that sets up more likelihood of disease happening in the body. I have some miracle stories of how people just transformed their mindset. And in one of one girlfriend, it actually made her cancer go away. It was before she was scheduled for radiology and chemo and all the things. They found cancer. They biopsied it. It was cancer. And then when they went to go start treatment, it was no longer there. I'm sure she's not the only case. I've heard it on podcasts. I heard it from other friends where, yes, your mindset can really help the body heal in dramatic, dramatic ways. So this is something I want to help women optimize because, wow, if you can take control of your mindset and not give in to the sugar and not give in to the alcohol and not do all the things that make our body predisposed to cancer and other things, just think of how much benefit you get, how much better you feel, how much you go through this life enjoying it more rather than regrets. So mindset is a big piece. And you know, mindset is something we work on inside of Drink Less Lifestyle, inside of Epic U as well. So important to have a optimal mental health and it transforms to optimal emotional health. So good. So we talk about 10 different pillars inside of Transform in 10. And today I just wanted to give you a flavor for them because I think it's really important to understand it's not just diet and exercise, ladies. It's not just calories in, calories out. And if you hear nothing else, I want you to understand it takes more than these two pillars to really optimize how you feel and really get the health that you want. And I want to empower you to get the health that you want, to function as your best self mentally, emotionally, and physically, and spiritually. And this is why inside Transform in 10, I call our community the Roaring Sisterhood, because we are roaring on fire for our health. We want good information. We want information that it pertains specifically to women, specifically in our age group. And so that community that we come together and we are talking about the studies I had a woman in there recently ask, I don't know how to bring up hormones with my doctor. What questions should I ask? And I armed her with science, with data, with articles she could take in and the questions that she can be asking. So she knows as she is advocating for her health. So this roaring sisterhood is such a delight to be with these women and championing for our best life. Also inside the program, we get two live monthly calls. You can read about that all on my website if you want to join. This is all about helping you be the best that you can be with your health and understanding your health. Please ask any questions inside the program, and I am there to help you understand your lab work 
and really the best next options to take. So I invite you to join Transform in 10. You could go to my website at epicu.com, click on Transform in 10. You'll find out all the information there. I have some resources that I send to you as well that are going to really explain more, plus some of my favorite supplements and some of my favorite products. So you get that little gift in the mail from me when you join this month, Transform in 10. But please take away from this episode, ladies, that you are in charge of your health, not your doctor, not me, not other people, not your spouse, not your kids, you. When you take full responsibility of your health, you can create a life on fire and it feels amazing. So I want to empower you and encourage you to do that. All right, my friend, wonderful being with you here today, and I will see you next week.